Welcome to The Foundry, where leaders are forged daily. Each week we investigate themes of leadership, entrepreneurship, and mindset with some of the greatest minds in real estate. And now, the data scientist of real estate, George Roberts. Oh, welcome back, Passion Investing community. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have round two with Vanessa Alfaro. In the first part, we talked a lot about leadership. And today in this uh, second half of the podcast, we're going to dive deeper into artificial intelligence. And I do have uh, one last great leadership question for Vanessa. So I hope you stay tuned for the entire episode. You're going to learn a lot about how to use AI in your business. And with that, uh, welcome back, Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you. Excited. Let's go for the All right. second round. All right. Well, we're excited to have you. And I always like to start by asking, uh, I'm interested in the in the personality tests um, and also your use of the AI to try and figure out uh, the people that you're talking to. I know that, that can make a huge difference. Um, I've been in many situations. Uh, many leaders are big believers in personality tests. And it's interesting when you get to see uh, some of your colleagues and their personalities and what they're interested in or, or how they approach things. And can you help us understand how that helps you, uh, or I should say really it's your acquisitions leader with mm -hmm. uh, talking to the brokers? Mm -hmm. And how do we use the personality test? Well, I, I think you mentioned that you're using the AI to figure out uh, the personality type of the mm -hmm. of the people that, that you're talking to, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, yes. So um, are you familiar with the DISC report? Oh, yes. Yeah, I believe that's the, the famous, you, uh, one of the famous ones. Have yeah. you taken the personality test before? No, I have some time ago. And I, yeah, why don't you go through the four, uh, the four types, the four main uh -huh. types? The four main types. So this, so this report, what it's going to give you is an overview okay, of where do you fall in that personality test. If you're D, S, I, or or C, or you are mostly a combination of of those. Okay, okay. and it's going to give you insights. I'm just reading here. Um, uh, so it's going to give you some insights about how you talk to that person. Um, if that person likes to more a friendly approach. Okay at the beginning of the conversation, or if that person likes to drive the conversation and just be the dominant person in the conversation, okay? Or if that person is gonna be more relaxed and just listen to you. Uh, for, for brokers, for me, it's a game changing because um, brokers is about empathy, okay? You wanna create a good relationship with, with your brokers. And when you go into a, um, these educational uh, courses, like the ones that we met, they all teach you the same. Create a relationship with the broker. See the things that they like. Create empathy. Create rapport. Okay. When you know, when you meet the broker for the first time, you have no idea who he is, right? So for me, this personality assessment allow us to start the relationship with the right foot, okay? and mostly our head of acquisition um, use it for that. And it also can connect with the email okay? and just highlight you if you're writing to that person who say, hey, don't say, uh, don't do a salutation to this person, okay? This person is a high B, just go straight to the point, okay? If you're writing to me, I am a really hardcore D, okay? Just go straight to the point, okay? Don't ask me how was my weekend, okay? I <laughs> just like go straight, hey, Vanessa, this is what we're doing today. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So I'm good with that. I won't feel offended. Some people will, okay, because it will feel that it's, it's, it's rude. Okay. So yeah. this AI connect with the email, okay, and it can highlight things. So it can send you, okay, change this phrase for this one, for example. Okay. And that's basically how we use it. Is this right all the time? I, well, I just met one person that told me that is not right, okay? Uh, but I would say that 99% of the time, it, it has been really correct when we ask people. Yeah, I love it. And it, it can be valuable. Uh, one of the most interesting personality types, and I think this comes from a completely different assessment, uh, it's, it's known as a we. Like imagine somebody just going down a slide 
you know, they uh, in IT, we need a lot of planning and a lot of organization, a lot of architecture, but some people really just like to just dive in and get started. That's, that's the we personality. And, you know, it, it, learning about that, that really helped me to understand, you know, hey, with this person, just listen to all their ideas and the enthusiasm. And, you know, of course, we're still going to go, we're going to plan things properly, we're going to do things methodically. But sometimes you you just have to realize some people have to give a voice to all those ideas in their head. And then, uh, you know, it's a lot easier to sit down and say, okay, well, now, how are we going to architect this thing and make sure that it's it's reliable? But yeah, I think that's that's very beautiful. And I think it's an excellent, maybe textbook example of how to use AI. You can't uh, you can't ask the AI, what should I say to this person? But you can ask the AI, um, you know, about the person's the values that you get from reading, if they've got uh, books that they've authored or maybe a website, et cetera. You can get some idea of their values and then hopefully find a, a better way to, to get that common ground. So, yeah, excellent. and. Uh, Gosh, you've given us so many examples. So you're <laughs> using this also to weed out the deals. And that's huge because it doesn't matter, it seems, how many times a person says, this is my buy box, and then look at the email and all the deals that get sent your way and you see things that are way outside the buy box. Some of that is just people casting a wide net and that's okay. I think that's actually a great statistic. I mean, you're weeding out 30% of the deals right away. And that gives you that much more time to work on the other 70%, knowing that 30% are just clearly outside of the buy box, not willing to look at underwriting models. That's something that's interested me too, because I've had, I believe, two people contact me with AI products uh, saying, hey, I've got an underwriting system and it uses AI and showing all the ways in which that provides value. Like, for example, uh, one of the things that I find people often get wrong is the taxes. Uh, taxes are different in every jurisdiction. Uh, when they go up, how much it has to do with the purchase price, or even if the purchase price is public information, that also differs by jurisdiction. So person's assumptions about what the taxes may be uh, can be completely wrong. And if you use the AI to uh, you know, give you a short summary of, of how property taxes are handled, you can certainly go on uh, and, and verify that. Anyway, that's a little bit more of further afield. The idea with AI as underwriting tool is actually coming to you and it's telling you um or here, here's another one uh, the acquisition costs that also differs uh hugely through jurisdictions and as you tighten up the underwriting i think the more help you can have on that sooner uh the better so i see a lot of opportunities for ai to to truly improve things i guess maybe the best question i ask you now since you gave us so many great examples is uh, what is the cost of all this? I mean, some things like the chat GPT, uh, you can get some free access to, but the underwriting tools and such, how much are you spending on this uh, AI as a tool for you? And then uh, what do you think the return on investment is? All right. Uh, basic tools that we use, we don't spend more than $500 a month. Okay, And those $500 a month, you have to give us, of course, enough uh, bandwidth for us not to be hiring someone else okay, for, for 2000. And, and the fact that our team can leverage with that, and I believe 100% that using those tools, we're saving probably two or three positions in our company. It's as, it's as big as that. And it's just $500 a month. Um, everything else, actually, right now, every product and every CRM, okay, and mostly every software is including AI inside their offer. Okay? And that's what, what I talk to people. It's like, if you're going into a software, make sure that the software you're using is using AI capabilities uh, on it. Otherwise, it's going to be obsolete okay, with other software that are using AI. The underwriting tool is a little bit more expensive. And building your own AI is probably way more expensive okay, if you have to do an, an API with another platforms. But we are not a tech company, okay? So we are not here to build AIs. We're here to optimize what we have so we can be more productive and make more money for our investors. So our focus is not to build our own AI, at least, as I told you, the one that is going to filter is going to make us a major 
change and it's going to make us a, a, a major uh, profit to our company because we'll be not only saving time, but we'll be also underwriting more deals if we do that. And probably, I said 30, but I believe that 50% of the time that this person used in the whole acquisition team is going to be gone. He will be able to do some other things that he can relate himself. Um, but I, I think that this also, these technologies are moving really fast. So you will see in the last 12 months that the technologies are going cheaper, more affordable, there are more competition. So I always say to people, don't lock yourself into a contract for a year because in three months, another five people are going to come with the same uh, with the same product, okay? And they will have to compete. And that's when the yeah. technology goes at $20 per month. <laughs> and you use that and you save $500 in a VA doing the same thing for $20 per month, right? So just be careful right now that we are in this hype that everything is appearing and the technology is moving too fast to spend a lot of money, okay, on this because they have to be competitive, okay? So six months later, they go from five hundred dollars to twenty, just like that. Amazing, yeah. Technology is beautiful. Um, yeah, one of the few things that's saving us from uh, being literally slaughtered by inflation. So, uh, <laughs> one more leadership question before we go into lightning round. Uh, so you've scaled businesses across international markets, uh, and. Uh, one of the things that, that happens, I mean, when you're growing quickly, sometimes it can be difficult to, to maintain um, quality or to have the proper systems in place. And there's a natural tension between doing things, doing new things, and then having, uh, you know, a set way of doing things the best, having the best practices, et cetera. So what is your approach to maintaining quality as you scale quickly? Is that your data science and microbiology person inside of you? <laughs> well, for, for is that me, microbiology really, just... <laughs> is that microbiology did i say that right yeah you know thanks i appreciate you did your research and that's one of the things i pride myself on too uh you know we are a top 20 apartment investing podcast i attribute a lot of that to the fact that i do tend to do a lot of research on my guests ahead of time. So I do appreciate that. So yes, I started out in <laughs> microbiology. I also worked in physiology and genomics, but really uh, more than anything- Genomics uh, it, do. Yes, I didn't yes. find that. Oh, wow. We have to talk about colossal bioscience. I'm going to be there. If you know colossal bioscience, I'm going to be there with my son to meet the founder, which is Ben Lam. We were invited last month uh, for a private tour to Colossal Bioscience. That the, this company is the one that is bringing back uh, through the genome and recreating the genome of the woolly mammoth, the dodo bird, and the Tas uh, Tasmanian tiger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very, very fascinating. Incredible. Yeah. Very yeah, it's, fascinating. A, it's amazing uh, mm -hmm. what. DNA has been preserved sometimes if it's, uh, you know, just the right uh, pH or, you know, the, the animals die very quickly, like peat bogs, et cetera. Uh, and, and also the, the ability to just put it all together. I mean, if you get enough overlapping shorter sequences, then uh, it's pretty amazing just how far it's they can go reconstructing uh, these. Yeah. I worked down the hall with somebody. Back when it was mm -hmm. new, I want to say this was like the 1990s, and he was uh, busy uh, re reconstructing uh, dinosaur DNA. And yeah, it was really, really They didn't know about that, but I know that they are not bringing back dinosaurs for sure. They, well, that's they already right. that's, said that's, that as well. Uh, that's a little different. So, um, you know, at some <laughs> point, I think people will probably will try to genetically engineer uh, some version of Jurassic Park. I don't know how far they're going to well, get. The, <laughs> what I like about colossal bioscience, and they have a reason why to bring those animals back. Okay, And regarding the woolly mammoth, there is actually a climate change reason of how the woolly mammoth can help positive uh, with fighting climate change. Okay? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's a whole, it's a whole, not only, uh, it, there's a whole of philanthropy okay, inside of the, for profit model of bringing back those specific animals. Interesting. But going back to your question, um, yes, you can scale really fast and you can actually get lost in the way that happened to me. Um, 
my first company uh, when I was 22. Okay? By, by the time I was 25, we had 2,500 employees. We had 17 offices around the country. We were top three marketing companies in the country. And I was 25 or 26. And I was sitting around with people that was 40, 45 years old. Okay. And we scaled really fast and, and kind of, it was really hard to keep control because we have to build systems and processes in the way. Uh, but as an entrepreneur as well, you probably don't read this, but what I have here, here, yes, what I have here. Oh, can um, I read in the back? This, Tell us. Yeah. <laughs> it's a famous quote that entrepreneur is the one that jumps out of the cliff and then builds the plane on the way down. <laughs> As an, I, <laughs> well, it certainly feels like that sometimes, are. but yes, I, yeah. I feel like, yeah, that's definitely part of the entrepreneurial spirit. When I meet mm -hmm. other entrepreneurs, these are people who just uh, jump at a new opportunity and uh, find a way to level up later. And I think that's a great way to live life. It's definitely a great tribe to be in. And I think with that, that'll be a great segue into our lightning round. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Yes. All right. Vanessa, if you could be known for only one thing, what would that be? Oh, the best mom in the world. That's my, my biggest title, being a mom of five beautiful souls. Beautiful. And twins too, huh? And what's the greatest lesson in leadership you have learned as an entrepreneur? Um, being a leader is tough. You have to make sure that everybody feel heard okay, and feel considered in order to be successful. And what personal characteristic has been most pivotal to your success? Massive action and desire. And I would say desire and massive action. Crazy, crazy desire for doing things that I just can't stop. <laughs> I will yeah, I love probably. It. I think we don't hear enough about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't hear yeah, enough about that. Yeah, but then if you have that desire, if you don't have that, if you have that desire, but then you don't take the action and move toward that, then it's when people get frustrated because you don't get to do what you your soul and you really want to do yeah i love it yeah i think if you do have true desire to do something you will find a way uh but at the same time i'll play the devil's advocate for a moment uh, uh yoda do or do not there is no try so for most people unfortunately i think they do need to be motivated by you know that they have to be pushed a little bit unfortunately but entrepreneurs are definitely a different breed and uh when one of us has that true desire, we do find a way. Well, anyway, I love, love Can this. Can I tell you something about try? Yes, okay, oh. that's good. This is better okay. than my random question. We'll, we'll hold that for a moment, yes. <laughs> try, try. Every time someone tells me, use the word try, I'm trying to do this. Can I ask you, George, try to stand up. Yes, yes, exactly. You either stand up or not. There is no try. You do it or not. There is no, like, oh, I'm trying. Okay, right now, you just stand up. So um, I, you do it or not, that's my philosophy about try. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Okay, good. So then I appreciate it. You have kind of both both uh, ends of the perspective there. Uh, Yoda was right. Uh, I don't think you get to be 800 years old without having a certain degree of wisdom. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> All right, so I've got some uh, random question cards. Just tell me when to stop cutting the deck. No. All right, top cards. Oh, wow. <laughs> Usually this is something silly, but this time it's it's uh, significant. What is the biggest lie you told as a child? Oh, my God. Yeah, well, I can't believe it. Like, I'm sorry. I, I, like, what is I the biggest lie the that deck. I said? <laughs> When I was a child, okay. Uh, oh my God. Well, my mom and my dad are not going to listen to this podcast. So I can say that when I was 15, when I was 15, I really wanted to go to this party uh, that the guy that I like was at that party. Okay. And my mom was traveling. So I completely lie my dad. Okay. 
and I told him that I was studying okay, for such a long time. And the funny thing is that the funny thing is that my dad looked at me and said, please do not tell your mom this never happened. <laughs> I love my dad. <laughs> he was so supportive. He passed away five years ago, but we have oh, so sad. many great stories, great stories with my dad. Yeah, don't tell your mom. This never happened. <laughs> <laughs> right, I love it. Okay, now now we've just segue back to the uh, that was very deep, but now now back to the the serious uh, of of what is one tip or trick that investors can implement in their business today. Investors as passive investors or as oh, an well, active obviously, investor. Uh, uh, could be, but uh, thinking mainly from entrepreneurs, love to lean on your leadership experience. Uh, is there any any sort of tips you would have for entrepreneurs? Like, what can you do? Something that you could implement today that's going to improve your business? Well, marketing and innovation is the soul of any business. So if you are not in marketing, you need to be in marketing. And if you are not thinking about innovate, you have to think things of how to do things out of the box okay and that's when ai comes to play just use ai and trying to get some brainstorming okay? of how you can do it better and different than anybody else because otherwise there is no way that we can survive for the next five years yeah i love it marketing often underrated uh best way i've heard it put is if coca-cola still has to remind you that they exist everybody needs marketing mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah all it's right well, now of he a business. Yeah, now I'm going to ask the question that, that you mentioned asking to the AI. Now I'm going to ask a human. Uh, can you name a book that's helped afford you as a leader, entrepreneur, or investor? And tell us why. Wow, so many. But I already mentioned The Buy By Your Time by Dan Martell. Okay, That's mm -hmm. an awesome guidance. And what I love about that is that it gave me a guidance of how to work with my executive assistant. Okay, how to train her and how to think that differently. It actually tells you how, uh, what is the name of the guy that owns Virgin? Oh, um, yes, Branson? Richard Branson. Richard Branson. He's telling you how Richard Branson's managed um, her assistant, and we are not Richard Branson's, but okay, it was great. I love that. And yeah. after that, we have 10x is better than 2x that expand your your knowledge of how easier, how better it is to go 10x instead of, of 2x, okay? And the who not how is another classic um, as well. Uh, is three, is good? Oh, three <laughs> is, is really actually two more than I expected. I would like to just expound <laughs> on your first one uh, because you did mention now for the second time, uh, buy Back Your Time, an outstanding book. One of the things that strikes me about that book is the quality of the supporting material. A lot of people get the idea that you you know, you know don't want to give away the secret sauce and you better read the book if you want to find out what's inside. But if you go to his website, uh, you'll see uh, it gives all these tips and, tips and tricks, planners, uh, summarizes the book for you. And I think that that's really the mark of a very confident author. There's so much more to find in the book, and he knows that. He knows mm -hmm. that uh, you're not just going to read this. Uh, I think he gives you about a 20-page 20, 20 PDF summary. Uh, those are the really great authors, I think, the ones that really, uh, they're, they're willing to create that value so that you want to go down and, and get the book. Yes, How to Buy Back Your and Time. And he's a huge advocate for AI as well. Yeah. Beautiful. Love it. All right. So now uh, just a quick one. We talked about books, but now uh, in the shortest form, well, I was going to ask you to give us a quote to help forge our listeners as leaders and entrepreneurs, but you did just give us a quote from uh, right behind you. Do you have another that you'd like to send us out with? Oh, wow. Well, um, did I give you the one? I love the one from Tony Robbins. 80% um, of your success is psychology. 20% is mechanics. Mm -hmm. And yes. I truly believe in that uh, your desire and your mindset is 80% respons responsible for your success. And then everything else is through the marketing, innovation, processes, and systems. But that's only 20%. Yeah, I couldn't agree more because even your mindset will even determine your skills over time. It's how quickly you learn. And one of the things that I like to highlight in my book, uh, that mindset really is everything because 
you know, it determines how much you enjoy that success. And you can have all the material in the world. And if you don't have the right values, the right mindset, you won't enjoy it. So I want to thank you, Vanessa. This has been an outstanding interview. You shared so much about uh, your personal approach to business, uh, your experience in business, uh, your experiences in leadership. I want to thank you so warmly for taking the time to share your knowledge and experience with our audience. Just want to make sure everyone has the opportunity to reach out to you. What is the best way to reach out to Vanessa Alfaro? Sure, they can reach out on uh, my website, venuspartners.com. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a contact form, there is a chat bot that can help you as well. Uh, if you want to talk to me or anyone on, on our team, you can go to the contact form. Um, we'll make sure that we book an appointment if you want to be a passive investor or um, like a potential partner with us. And also, I do have something very cool that I'm very passionate about, which is the AI teaching class. Okay, That is a free class. It's a free five-day um, five challenge for people in real estate. So if you are interested, it's completely free. And it's, uh, the website is reaichallenge.com. Right, great. And yes, your assistant sent those out to us. We'll make sure those go into the show notes. Again, thank you so much. Thank you.